All right guys, welcome back. So today we are going to get started putting the engine back together, which you can't see, but I am pointing at an engine. There is an engine sitting there. Um, if you saw the last video, the engine um, is in better shape than I expected, which is good, uh, of course. There's no scored pistons. The bearings are in perfect shape. The only thing that it appears to have happened is the molly facing or the coating on some of the top rings um, chipped away and the rings were just in terrible shape. That's all there is to it. The number one piston, the pin was um, pretty tight in the rod and in the piston actually. Um, it didn't take very much effort to get it apart which is good because what that means is the pin is not bent. So um, I have both of them right here and what I was going to show you or what I'm talking about is, let me see if I can get this to focus. So that silver line on the top of the pin right there is actually traded material. And if you see, it's on both ends. That is scoring or traded material from the piston. And the rod, I don't know if you can see down in there. Let's see if we can get the focus on that. The rod is, it's in good shape. It's just, uh, it's got a small amount of, I don't know, scoring as well. And if you look, this pin kind of resists going in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the pin for straightness and we're going to clean the pin up in the lathe by uh, using some scotch Brite or some really fine sandpaper and we're going to refit it to the rod as I spit everywhere. We're going to refit this pin to the rod and we're going to refit the pin to the piston as well and uh, see if we can get it to go our way. First things first, let's lightly chuck the uh, wrist pin up in there. Get us some fairly fine emery cloth. Didn't take much at all to get that cleaned up. All right, there's the first side. It feels really smooth, and you can kind of now you can get a really good contrast there of uh, just how bad it looked before. It really wasn't that bad, but how it looked before compared to what we're going to do to it or what we did to it so we're going to turn it around in the chuck and polish the other side now Okay, I'm not sure what all you can see in the camera, but that pin has a little bit of wobble to it or a little bit of run out. So I'm going to bring the camera up close so you can see. I think that's really hard to see in the video, but that thing has a few thousands of run out. Okay, we got the pin. It's really nice and cleaned up. Um, and like I showed you in the video, I don't know if it's actually going to come through in the video or not, but the pin has a little bit of wobble in the chuck. When you clamp on this end, this end wobbles a little bit, kind of like that. Um, my lay chuck probably isn't in the best of shape, so we're going to put this on a granite surface plate and we're going to essentially roll it and see, um, well, just how good it rolls. If it's flat, straight, if it rolls good or whatever and um, I guess we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so one thing I want to show you guys, this is the number one piston, the one that had the tight rod in it and the tight wrist pin and all that. And I think that you can probably see it pretty good in the camera. Yeah, right there. You can see the galling in there and it's actually really minor. Come on, focus camera. 
so they can see. Everybody wants to see. They just want to see it. In there somewhere. Anyways, you get the idea. And it's like that on both sides. Um, come on, camera. Work with me. Where are you at? Right there on both sides. So, that's going to take a little bit of hand work. The golly isn't bad. Like, you can drag your finger, fingernail across it and you can't even feel it. Um, so, next thing we're going to do, we're going to check the wrist pin on a granite surface plate. And for those of you who aren't familiar with that, a granite surface plate is a, a known flat um, piece of granite that they use in the machine shop or in a machine shop. For various different things you can get them in huge sizes little ones big ones whatever so the one that i'm going to show you here is a little guy uh six by six i think it is and we're just going to set the wrist pin down on it and see if we can stick feeler gauges under it i already know the answer to this um but we'll show you anyways all right so what you're looking at is the surface of the granite plate right here and this one is actually used for setting tool height on cnc uh, tooling holders so I'm gonna set this wrist pin on here and if the the surface plate isn't sitting flat or anything like that so it, it's probably gonna roll around pretty easy and whatnot um, all we're gonna do is just take this little really thin feeler gauge thousands and a half and I just want to check it for flatness um, and this thing is really hard to operate so bear with me As you can see I'll turn it where you can see it in the camera but we're just trying to put it under the edge of it and good god that truck drive by is loud um we just want to see if it goes in anywhere under there and if a wrist pin is bent a thousandths and a half that's really bad so we'll just check it in a couple places oh what have we here that is bad right there guys I really didn't think I would see that. So, I'm holding pressure down on the wrist pin. I'm going to move it to a different area of the surface plate just to make sure that the problem doesn't exist in the surface plate itself. And it looks like Probably, yeah, see it? It goes under there, out here by the end. So, I'm really not satisfied with the answers on that. Uh, that's bad. That, that I mean, for a wrist pin to be bent a thousandths and a half like this in that short distance for a really thick wrist pin like that, that's some really bad news. So, that could potentially mean that the piston is, the bore's in the piston or out of a line or any number of things uh not by much but nonetheless it probably took a beating so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my other surface plate and we're going to check it on a bigger more accurate grade of surface plate and see if we get the same results all right so i got the other surface plate set up right here below the camera same wrist pin same feeler gauge and we're going to check it the same way all right so this is, as you can see, this is a bigger surface plate and just to rule out the other surface plate being imperfect, um, it is a lower grade surface plate and the, the allowance of tolerance of flatness is probably a lot higher than it is on this one. So we're going to set the wrist pin up there. We're going to check it the same way and look at this. I'm holding that wrist pin tight down against that surface plate and that thing slides under there like it's nobody's business. That is bad news. Um, it's bad in that this wrist pin and that piston can probably not be trusted anymore. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put the other piston in and I don't know if I told you guys this in the last video but when I bought these pistons and built this motor two years ago um i bought nine pistons and nine wrist pins so um for no particular reason probably a little foreshadowing there um 
happened way back when and I didn't realize what was going on but however I do have a spare piston and a spare wrist pin and the show will go on okay so I went in there and got in my uh, pile of spare parts and got the new wrist pin here's the old one put it over here and get it out of my way or out of my reach so we'll test this wrist pin the exact same way we checked the old one and see if we get different results, which we should. So let's go down here and look at the surface plate. Same feeler gauge, new wrist pin, and just roll it a little bit. Okay. Just as we expected, the new wrist, wrist pin is flat, so we're gonna check this one one more time. Roll it. There it is. So, as you can see, that feeler gauge is sticking out the other side right there. This one is no good. Okay, so I just did an experiment a minute ago um, I was trying to send a picture to somebody of this wrist pin and then I did this so maybe you can see this on the camera we can keep it roll it towards the lens see the light coming and going okay that's the old wrist pin here's the new one nothing Okay, so I think it's safe to say that that wrist pin is toast. So we're going to continue uh, putting the engine back together, but we're going to use the new piston and the new pin, uh, the spare one that I had mentioned a couple minutes ago. Okay, so with the discovery of the, of the bent wrist pin, this is actually the new one, but with the discovery of the bent wrist pin, the old one that came out of it, we need to check the rod for straightness. Um, so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to put the new wrist pin in and I haven't done anything to this rod yet and the new wrist pin goes in and out like it's supposed to so I'm going to set it on the surface plate and what we're going to do is we're going to check from the surface of the plate up to each side of the wrist pin and see how flat it is and that'll tell us if the rod is bent in either direction okay so this really isn't a precision environment but it's precise as we can get right now um, and this will kind of give me an idea of, well, how jacked up it was or is. Um, so what we've done, we take the height gauge, we put it all the way down to the floor of the, of the granite surface plate and we zero it out. So we got all the zeros there. Let's go. All right. We'll take it up and turn this thing where we can see it in the camera, hopefully. We just get it kind of close and we turn it like this. Now what we can do is we can lock down this thimble on the top and we can lock down the thimble. There we go. Lock down the thimble. Okay, as you can see it's hitting it pretty hard right there and we don't want to do that. So we take this guy and we adjust him up until it barely hits it. All right, that's very close right there. So right there, I can hear it brushing across there and I can't feel it moving. Make sure everything's tight. See, I moved something right there just doing that. Okay, so that's 6.710. Five, seven, ten and a half. Now, ideally, we would leave the rod where it is and we would bring the surface plate around to the side, but since we don't have a lot of real estate to work with, we're going to turn the rod around. I can't feel it brushing it, but I can also, I can't see any light under it. It would be really hard to show that in the camera, but... We're going to measure it and see what we get, just because. OK. 
Okay, so we're close. Okay, so just by adjusting it and checking and rechecking and adjusting and whatnot, best I can tell, it's within a thousandth and a half of being straight this way. And probably half of that measurement is the slop in this wrist pin of the wrist pin being able to tilt like this from side to side. So all in all, I think I'm going to run it. That is not enough to worry about um, in any capacity. There's enough variance from turning the rod side to side between that and where the the height gauge sits on the surface plate and whatnot. I would say the rod is probably pretty stinking close to being perfect. Um, <clears throat> so. I am glad to see that because this set of rods is close to $2,000 and I really don't want to replace any of them. Um, never fails. Uh, so I think that's a good point to start actually putting the thing back together and quit analyzing everything because this is the one spot that was going to be problematic. Alright, I couldn't handle those results being good enough uh, so I set up a little different scenario uh, using a test indicator so we don't have to move the height gauge around and I got a little bit different results so if you watch the needle there I think you can see the whole thing in the camera um, it looks like we're going about plus three right there maybe plus two and a half three somewhere around there if I turn this around it looks like we're gonna get Plus, uh, plus six and a half. So we're somewhere in the neighborhood of about three thousandths tilt uh, to one side. Now, three thousandths over, I already did the math on this, three thousandths over six inches is only like, guys, like two ten thousandths of an inch per inch of lean. So it's not very bad at all. And there's probably still some flaw in the way that I'm measuring this, but this is all I have right now. So that's between six and seven on that side, right up close to the rod. And then this one is four, four and a half. So there's probably a few thousandths of tilt to it. I think that's probably going to be just fine. And I don't know what the tolerances are from the factory, but... I would say that that's probably pretty close. I may even uh, go ahead and take one of the other ones apart just to check it to satisfy my curiosity. Alright guys, so I went back and rechecked all of the pistons and rods. I took all of them apart and I think you can see, see them over here on the corner. Um, every one of them checked exactly the same or very close to the same um, when I started using the, the test indicator instead of the height gauge itself. Um, so I'm pretty confident that everything's okay there. Uh, the one thing that I did notice is that all of the wrist pin bores in the pistons themselves are a little tight now um, for whatever reason. Uh, the rods, all of the rod bushing bores are fine. The wrist pin slides right through them um, with you know just using your thumbs. So I'll probably have to hone the pistons just a little bit um, to make sure that they float freely like they should and um, we'll put it back together. Uh, this video is already getting pretty long so I think we'll call it quits on this one before we start assembling the short block. So uh, if you made it this far, congratulations. You are really bored once again. Uh, thanks everybody for stopping by. I certainly do appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit the notification icon and we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.